It's five o'clock where I am, four o'clock London, 11 a.m. Eastern. Welcome, it's live Friday Q&A with me, Phil, here on YouTube, Digital DJ Tips YouTube channel, uh, Facebook, two places, the Global DJ Network and our Facebook page. We're on Twitch, we're on uh, our Mixcloud live page, which is at mixcloud.com slash live slash digital DJ tips. Uh, so wherever you're watching us, hello. It's great to be here. Great to end the week as we like to do with uh, with uh, some chat, some DJ talk. And I want you to give me your questions. I want you to tell me what you need help with. So type away. To start with, just say hello in the uh, in, in your box, in your, in your comments, whatever. Laurie says 10 central. So uh, there you go, 10 o'clock central time uh, over on our Facebook uh, page. Uh, Buffo on the beat says, good morning and blessings from Sparta, New Jersey. Always a privilege and a pleasure. It's good to have you here. Hi to Joey van der Meer. Hi to John Brock. He says, hello from Dublin. Gustavo uh, and Matt, Sideshow Mall. Uh, to Raphael, Tina, to Beatrice. Uh, so lots and lots of you tuning in now. So at least we're live. Hi to Steve Excite over on Twitch. And uh, I've just clicked the go live now button on the slightly clunky Mixcloud page. So we will have some people joining us over on Mixcloud very soon. So how's your week been, people? We'll just have a few minutes of chat just to start off and let people pile in. Uh, how's your week been? Tell me. Uh, C.B. Bellarosa says... Uh, I just finished writing a screenplay about a beginner DJ. I pulled a ton of dialogue from what I learned from your videos. How cool is that? Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, so uh, DJ Ice Age, uh, here's our first proper question. This is cool. I work with Virtual DJ. I'm having a hard time trying to scratch. I have the DDJ SB3 and I'm learning how to scratch, but I'm finding it very difficult. Right. Here's the tip for learning how to scratch, DJ Ice Age. When you're scratching, your hands do two separate things. One of them is doing this bit, and one of them is doing this bit. And if you grab both things and just go like this, it is not going to sound right. It's like watching Roger Federer do a serve and then picking up a tennis racket and saying, I can do that. There's about 20 steps beyond or rather behind what you see when you see a scratch DJ doing this. So you need to, you need to learn the two things separately. You need to learn this separately from this. This is a cutting movement and this is a scratching movement. And until you do that, you're never going to get it because they don't happen at the same time. Even on the most simple scratches, these things are happening apart from each other. So my first tip is to learn each hand at once. Now, there is a very useful scratch pack that we have at Digital DJ Tips. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not sure exactly how you get this. We will post that underneath uh, the... Uh, <clears throat> underneath the Facebook page, how to get the scratch pack. I'll make sure that gets posted underneath the Facebook page for you. Now that will give you some sounds and some advice. Uh, and then if you really want to take it further, our uh, Scratching for Controller DJs course is awesome for this. It will take you right from where you are now, finding it very hard, all the way through to actually being able to do this stuff. So uh, thank you very much for that. Yeah, scratching is one of those things that is just not as easy as it looks. Uh, but that's because you are trying to jump to, to stage 20 when you haven't got stage one nailed and you really have to get stage one nailed. Actually, it's on YouTube, uh, DJ Ice Age. So we'll post it. We'll reply to you on YouTube with the link to that scratch pack. Uh, I'm making a note of your name now. And we will get that done for you, my friend. Uh, all right, then. Greetings to GBE386 in LA. Good to have you here this morning for you. Uh, hello to Kenneth and Mitch and Charlie in St. Lucia. Uh, hello to Matt in Northampton, Massachusetts. In, over there in Boston, same kind of neck of the woods. We've got Sean. Hello. Uh, all right, then. So let's get some more questions. Uh, this next question, well, actually, no, I asked you to tell me how your week had gone. Uh, so Tech One TV says, my week was good. I watch news and listen to music. I also work on some tech YouTube videos. That's cool. Thank you for sharing that. All right, then, more questions. Keep these questions coming in, people. I'll answer literally as many as I can. That's what I'm here for this hour. Uh, Morris says, my son is just starting off uh, the DJ and I want to do it with them. What do you think is the best software or the best way for us to get started? All right, then, very simple. The best way to get started, let me just run to the back of here, is to get yourself a beginner DJ controller. And our beginner DJ controllers, he said, running off to the other side of the office. 
here's a couple of options for you. The first one I'm going to recommend you get is a Pioneer DDJ 400. So this is an SB3. Let's start with the, the, the um, Serato one. Pioneer DDJ SB3. This is for Serato software and it's a great beginner controller. It's got everything you need to get going. You won't go wrong with it. Now, the alternative is the one I said at the beginning, the Pioneer DDJ 400. Now this is for Pioneer's own software record box. Not quite as popular as Serato, but it's a better value controller because the software you get with it is the full version. The software you get with the other one, you have to uh, you have to buy the full version later on. Now the software that comes with it works, it's called DJ Lite, but you will want the full version later on. So the Pioneer record box controller, the DDJ400 is cheaper because the software comes with it and the software is very good. It just depends on whether you want to ultimately be a Pioneer DJ or um, a Serato DJ. Just ask any DJs in your town what they use. Uh, and in, uh, as soon as you've got three people saying one or the other, go for that. It's always good to have the software that the people around you use. Uh, so yeah, the Pioneer DDJ 400 or the DDJ SB3. Uh, just buy one of those, a uh, pair of headphones, any speakers that you can plug a wire in, because you've got to wire your speakers, you can't have Bluetooth, and you're off, you're ready to go. Uh, and then get a copy of our DJing Made Easy course. Head over to Digital DJ Tips, click courses at the top, and go to DJing Made Easy. It's our perfect course, especially if you're learning with a, you know, your son or your daughter because it's it's just at that level and it'll get you off on the right foot uh, thank you very much for that all right then so i hope that helps morris uh so uh buffo says i just got a brand new reloop turntable and i'm looking for a mixer with serato that would go well with that any recommendations would be immensely appreciated i just started djing this year go for the newmark scratch mixer as long as you're, you're happy with two channels newmark scratch it's a great little mixer if you want a mixer that is uh four channel uh i would probably go for probably one of the smaller serato mixers although sorry i meant uh one of the smaller pioneer mixes although for serato you might want to go for this one the allen and heath zone 4c it's a great little mixer and uh, it's made for Serato, so if you want to use vinyl with Serato at some point, this is going to work. Well, you do because you've got the RP8000s. Yeah, this could be a good one. So this or the Newmark Scratch. This is the Allen & Heath Zone 43C. Uh, but the Newmark Scratch is an incredible value mixer. I think it's $499 and you get the control vinyl and everything with it. It's really good value. Uh, so I hope that helps. Buffo. Uh, all right then. Um, so... Raphael says, I've been relying on mixing music with DJ intros and now I've been struggling with music that doesn't have them. Great question. So most music, well, some music has got beats at the beginning and beats at the end, right? So you can mix in and out. And even if it's only got a few beats at the beginning and end, you can always loop them so that they become lots of beats at the beginning and end and it's easy to mix in and out. How are you going to mix if you haven't got them? Uh, that question could take us a week to answer and show you and all that stuff. Uh, but... You can either try and get the DJ edits. So if you join a download pool like DJ City or BPM Supreme, they have DJ friendly edits of most music, which have basically got beats at the beginning and end to make mixing easier. Or you can make your own edits. So you can uh, load your track into a free wave editor like Audacity or something like that, put some beats at the beginning and end, maybe take them from somewhere else in the track. Or you can learn to mix them in more skillful ways. Now, that's where our... Um, our um, Mixing courses come in. So we've got mixing power skills. If you go over to the Digital DJ Tips site and look at the click at the top, click at the top, find mixing power skills. And that will show you how to mix tracks like that that, that don't have intro beats or outro beats. Also how to change BPM, how to change genre and all that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's part of the fun of mixing is it's finding out how to do that stuff. Uh, so anyway, I hope that's helpful for you, Raphael. Um, Timothy says, great week. Thanks for asking. You're welcome. Uh, my second turntable came in the mail. Yeah, who wants one turntable, eh? And I finally started getting some reps on the decks with my records. How about you, sir? Thank you for asking, Timothy. Likewise, my week's been all right. It's been busy. We're preparing a lot of content that's going live next week. And uh, yeah, it's been a busy old week. Um, uh, yeah, we just finished the sale of our um, production course, the launch of our production course that Joey's made that's done done very well. Got lots of new producers in there. Uh, it's just called Dance Music Formula. It's an Ableton course. So that was hard work last week. I think we closed out on Thursday. Uh, it's actually a holiday here today in Gibraltar. It's uh, And in the UK, actually, but I've come into work because it's Friday and that's 
that's this uh, that's this session. I wasn't going to miss this session. So so thank you for asking. Uh, all right then. Um, how do I DJ with Virtual DJ 2020 with no controller using my laptop only? All DJ software has got keys that you can control it on, including Virtual DJ. Just look in the keyboard shortcuts to find what they are, and it's easy. Uh, it's how I practice all my sets using just the keyboard and headphones late at night, sat at the table, sat at the living room table. Uh, so yeah, look at the shortcut keys. Uh, all right then, so um, Richard says, hey Phil, loving your videos. Uh, any advice fixing Twitch uh, iPhone app that turns my HD into SD when I turn down the lights to show off my lasers during my live streams? Probably because your up speed is not fast enough. So as soon as stuff starts moving on your screen and your app on your phone needs more bandwidth to get that up. If you sat there still, your app on the phone will say, what's changing on this image? And it'll say nothing. So it doesn't need much bandwidth to communicate that to Twitch. But if you suddenly start going, hey, 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 flashing a few lights, it needs more bandwidth because I'm pretty sure the way the compression works is instead of sending the whole picture all the time, it says what's changed and it sends that. So I think that's probably what's happening there, Richard. So just try and get a stronger connection, better Wi-Fi, try it in an area with stronger Wi-Fi and see if that fixes it. And if it does, that will be what the issue is. Um, or tell your kids to get off uh, YouTube or Fortnite or whatever it is they're on uh, what for the duration of your Twitch show. Uh, all right then. Um, so John says, I'm planning a set for the last night of DJ Save My Life live stream for COVID-19. Have you heard about it? Yes, we've been publicising it for those guys uh, over on our social channels. So John, I hope that goes well. Do let us know how it goes on. Uh, are they going to make a Pioneer DDJ 600 or not? It's a great question because this is a Pioneer 400. The one behind me there is the Pioneer, you can probably just about see it, that one there is the Pioneer 1000. There's an 800 that's a bit smaller than the 1000, but are they going to make one of these a bit bigger, maybe with four channels and stuff? Uh, the answer is, you've got to think they are, because why would they have that model number missing in the range? But we haven't heard anything about it. So... Uh, uh, so uh, cool. Well, look, we can't all have a good week, and Ed, Eddie's had a rubbish week. DJ Play TV Frozen, I need money. Uh, so, yeah, Eddie, it happens to us all. Uh, so, um, so yeah, we hope you have a better week next week. Eddie, uh, Mark just says, I love what you're doing. Thank you, Mark. Uh, all right, then. Um, so the next, uh, the next um, comment, I'm scrolling down them now live, which is what we always do. Uh, ah, right, okay. So this is what uh, Eddie was saying. Uh, Play DJ TV. Uh, shut down because of the cost. Yeah, this was a, uh, a live streaming service for DJs. It always looked like it was never going to last. It looked like it wasn't really legal. Uh, you know, some of these web services don't look too hot, really. Try Mixcloud Live. Seriously, go to Mixcloud Live to live stream. You'll have to work to get your audience there. But if you do that, uh, they're rock solid. They're, they're in beta, but they're not going anywhere. Uh, so speaking of Mixcloud Live, uh, we are live on Mixcloud, although you wouldn't know it. I'm just going to refresh my page uh, and check that that's actually happening. Uh, it might not be. Uh, yeah, it is. We're live on Mixcloud. We've got no comments over there at the moment. Uh, we've got a total of about... Uh, let's have a look. So this is, I mean, this is a problem with Mixcloud. It is it's a, a new platform and therefore it's, uh, it's, you're going to find it hard to get an audience to it. And I'll give you uh, an example of that. Our audience at the moment for this live stream as we're talking now is about 200 people, of which five are on Mixcloud. So, you know, it's an up and coming, up and coming platform for sure. But do use it, do support them. Right, okay. So, uh, and if you are one of our five viewers on Mixcloud, share this please. Uh, and also uh, say something because you're likely to get your comment read out because guess what? There's not many of you there, which means you've got my full attention. Uh, all right then. Uh, I'm trying to make a decision between Serato and Virtual DJ, says Eric. Which one would you recommend? I can't recommend that for you. Serato tends to be most popular in America, most popular with hip hop DJs uh, and uh, open format DJs. Virtual DJ, very popular with mobile karaoke video DJs, if that helps you. Both will do the job for you. Uh, any news on a UK release for the Denon DJ Prime 4? It's already out, uh, Rui16. Uh, maybe they're just out of stock everywhere. Uh, so, um, so next. Uh, people are talking about the Allen Heath Zone 43C, that mixer I just showed you. Peter says, I've got one arriving tomorrow. I'm thinking of combining it with two Pioneer XDJ 700s. Is that a good choice? Yeah, it's fine. Um, but, you know, you just have to assess what you want and see if they're, they're going to have what you want. Um, 
I can't really answer that question for you, to be honest. Uh, but if, yeah, if you want something to, you know, something to work as a deck, the XDJ 700s will be absolutely fine for that. Uh, all right, then. Um, so this is from uh, Kenneth. I've got a MacBook Pro 2.3 gig, 16 uh, memory, Intel 512 megabyte uh, graphics, and Serato video freezes from time to time. I'd say the problem is your graphics card. Probably half a gig graphic card isn't enough. Uh, we've got a two gigabyte graphic card on this computer that I'm talking to you on now. That struggles sometimes. I really want to get the Mac, the iMac Pro with the eight gig card or a 16 inch new MacBook with the eight gig card. But certainly you might find it's the graphics. If you go into your, um, uh, your activity monitor on your Mac OS, so just um, go to the finder, type activity monitor and that will launch. And then in the window, in the top menu, you can uh, go to GPU history or press Apple and four. And it'll give you a little box that will show you how your graphic processor is doing and whether it's overloaded or not. So that's a good way to check if it is that, because if that's constantly overloaded, then you know that, that, that you know, the problem is with your your um your graphics card. So uh, I'm just, uh, oh look at that, there's me live on Mixcloud. Uh, I was just gonna go and try and switch over and show you uh, what it looks like. There you go, that's what it looks like. It's this little box here. And you can see in the bottom right hand corner, you've got the, um, you've got the, uh, that's my graphics card is currently being used about 15%. Uh, and if those blue bars, bars were all the way up to the top, then that means you would, uh, you'd have a problem. And you'll probably find that that is what's happening on your graphics card. Um, so I'm just making a note of something uh, because we're live. So, you know, that's OK, isn't it? I'm allowed to make notes of things that come into my head. You're allowed to make notes too, people. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, you know, that's the graphics card and how it works. All right then, hope that helps, Kevin. Uh, is it worth upgrading from Tractor Pro 2 to Pro 3? Yes, it's always worth upgrading in that way because it's kept up, kept updated with for the uh, new operating systems. Do upgrade. Uh, just tuning into your video and it looks like 4K, is it? It's a very, very high quality camera. I'm talking to you on a... Um, uh, on a 4K camera feeding into the computer. It's actually streaming out at 1080 high quality. 1080 looks awesome. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm glad it's looking good. So thank you for that. Uh, all right then, uh, still no one talking to me over on Mixcloud. Come on, someone get over to Mixcloud. Head over to mixcloud.com slash live slash digital DJ tips and say something in that box. Anyone watching this now who does that, I promise I'll read your name out. Let's get, you know, we've all got to get behind Mixcloud. Uh, we've got a lot, hundreds of comments coming in on all the other platforms, uh, but not on Mixcloud. So let's let's sort this out, people. Uh, all right, then. Uh, can we have an update on the status of Mixcloud, says Mark? Uh, any further updates from last week? I actually interviewed the, the boys at Mixcloud about it. Uh, no, I've got no further update. I'm talking to them again on Tuesday. Uh, uh, so maybe I'll have a further update for you in the Tuesday tips live uh, on Tuesday but at the moment I don't have anything um, so uh, I've had a busy week says Sideshow Mall uh, making dance tutorials for my students watching DJ videos and setting up my first live stream on, live stream on Mixcloud uh, but the audio was a bit slow any idea what might have caused it, it was probably your uh, computer just struggling a little bit with uh, with everything you were plugging into it. Uh, close down everything else on the computer and keep an eye on the activity monitor or the system resources, uh, whatever it is on your particular OS that tells you how much you're pushing the computer. Sideshow Mall. Uh, the DDJ 400 is great for beginner DJs, says uh, Ray J over on Twitch. So. Uh, uh, so there you go. There's a vote for there's a vote for the DDJ 400. I agree. It's an awesome little beginner computer. I started that says Ray J with that, and I still use it to this day. Yeah, most people who get a first controller, as long as they buy that controller correctly, end up keeping it as a, a backup controller when they uh, update. So all right then. Uh, if you've just joined us, it's uh, Tuesday. Uh, no, it's not. It's Friday Q and A live Q and A with me, Phil, on all the Digital DJ Tips channels. Uh, you're watching a Digital DJ Tips live cast. We are the DJ School. Uh, that teaches online and we are here to help you become better DJs and better DJ producers. So if you enjoy this, please do share it. Please do follow the page, uh, subscribe to the channel, click notify, click show posts first and all that stuff uh, so that we can spread it far and wide. That's all I ask of you for the free advice we're giving you. Uh, all right then. So um, so more of your uh, comments. Uh, Nicholas says, I'm loving the Tractor Control S4 Mark III. Uh, and I agree with you. We've got one over there actually. Great little controller. 
Uh, all right then. Uh, so all, all the votes here. DJ Mike Marquez says, I've got the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2 and DJM 900, both club standards, and I still have the DDJ 400. It's an amazing controller. Best beginner controller. So there you go. Uh, so lots of votes coming in for that one. Uh, all right then. Um, so let's keep looking. So DJ Stuntle, I'm afraid I am not very good at reading what I think is Dutch or could be German. I think it's Dutch. Uh, so sorry uh, for that. I would uh, love to be able to help you out with that one. Um, how do you feel about Algorithms DJ going with monthly payments? Uh, it's happening all over the place, Tech One TV. Um, so, you know, it's just the way of the world. How do I feel about it? I don't really feel anything about stuff. It's not my job to feel things about stuff. It's my job to help you guys and girls with whatever you choose to go with. So, you know, we'll we'll, we'll definitely support and continue to support all our students using algorithm software. Uh, all right then. Uh, hello, Phil. When I use my DDJSR as my sound card, uh, my as my sound card on OBS, I get popping and static. What can I do to reduce it? I don't have an answer to that. Uh, you could check that your um, uh, that your settings are right in the uh if you're using a mac it's in the audio settings and the um audio input settings but it's beyond my beyond my skill set that i use the techie geeks here to make sure our audio is working okay um so if anyone can help dj ziggy on twitch please go and uh please go and do so cb is starting his little one off or her little one off on the ddj 200 which is this little pioneer controller here it is a cute little thing uh, it doesn't have a sound card built in, so you have to use the splitter cable uh, to get the sound out of your phone, tablet, or computer, but it's a great little starting device. Uh, how do I live stream with two computers, one for streaming and one for DJing? And how do I link them all together, says Stefan? Well, we've, we've got so much stuff on Digital DJ Tips now about live streaming. If you go to Digital DJ Tips, click the, uh, the uh, magnifying glass search in the top right-hand corner, type live streaming, hit enter, you'll see at least half a dozen articles. But in short, the way you do it is you have one computer with maybe a webcam or two plugged into it, pointing at your decks and stuff, and you have a audio interface, something like the iRig Stream. So this plugs into your controller, and the output of it plugs into your computer, your broadcast computer. This brings the audio in, and the cameras plugged into it bring the visuals in. Then you that that has a piece of software running it running on it, like OBS. That a lot of people are talking about, uh, which you put in your Facebook credentials or your Instagram credentials. Well, you can't use Instagram actually. Your Twitch credentials or your YouTube credentials or your Mixcloud Live credentials, and it broadcasts that live for you. So that's the one computer. The other computer, DJ computer, plug it into your controller, DJ like normal. All that computer is doing is being your DJ computer like it always is. So that, that's how it works in a, you know, in a nutshell. Uh, so Stefan, I hope that gives you a, a starting point, but do, do go and read our tutorials. We spent a lot of time on there and there's also a lot of videos we made as well. Hi Phil, says Joy. I still happen to use the Pioneer DDJ SB, which is the original version of the SB3 that I showed you a minute ago. My question is uh, regarding the cue points. How to access the cue points beyond four cue points? I use Serato DJ Pro. Yeah, because you can only use four cue points on the on the screen on the pads. I think on the SB, uh, you can use keyboard shortcuts for them. Just look at the keyboard shortcuts and use them on the um, on your laptop keyboard. You can still access them or use the mouse and click them on the software. So that's another way of doing it. Uh, another hot cues uh, question. This is from Ewa who says. Um, uh, I'm using Serato, but my mate uses Rekordbox. Is it possible to set hot cues in one software uh, and to import them into the other one with the rec with the hot cues included? Yeah, there's lots of software that can do that. There is a Record Buddy. Uh, there's a, a piece of software called Mixo, M-I-X-O. Uh, there's two of them. There's DJCU, DJ Conversion Utility. All of those will do it. Uh, I would start by looking at... Um, uh, DJ conversion utility, maybe, because it's the cheapest. See if that works out for you. Uh, but yeah, there, there are bits of software that will do that. Uh, so I hope that helps you. Buffo just says, thank you. You're very welcome. It's what I'm here for. Uh, all right, then. Um, so uh, Matt is seconding the Newmark Scratch that I recommended earlier. Great for beginners and upwards. It's a great mixer, full stop. I don't think you'd ever need another mixer um, if you, you know, a beginner to intermediate Scratch DJ. Uh, how do I get my deleted crates back? If you're talking about Serato, I don't think you can. I wish you could. Um, Benedict says, great to see you, Phil. Are you? I, I am legally allowed to upload a re-edit 
uh, to SoundCloud. Am I legally allowed to upload a re-edit? Uh, no, you're not. Uh, unless you've got rights for the uh, the track you re-edited, you're not allowed to legally upload it to SoundCloud. Uh, it's just the way it is. You could try uploading it to Mixcloud. Technically, you're not allowed. Sorry, to YouTube. Technically, you're not allowed to, but you might get away with it. Uh, they generally just tend to monetize things like that. And uh, and from there, you know, you'll be all right. But there's no guaranteeing about that. Uh, they might they might block you. Uh, you know, copyright's are an annoying thing, especially when you see big brands like Beatport and so on and Defected, you know, basically doing it almost, it looks like they're just getting away with it and we can't, but that's the way it is, I'm afraid. Uh, all right then. Uh, so more and more of your... Questions, DJ uh, Cisov, uh, sorry, I cannot pronounce this, Siskov ones. I just got the phase, the MWM phase. This is the, the wireless scratch system. I'm not sure it's reliable enough to use at a gig. What's your opinion? Lots of DJs are using it at a gig and they've upgraded the firmware to make it more reliable. Just get it working at home. And if you're happy with it at home, then use it at a gig, I would say. Uh, that's going to be your best bet. If you can find it, get it to work at home, then... Uh, there's no reason why it wouldn't work at a gig, just, but just practice with it lots. Wow, we finally got people over there on Mixcloud. Uh, quite a few, actually. My page just wasn't refreshing. Let me just go turn the aircon on because I'm getting so hot here, chatting to you guys and girls. I can't believe we're halfway through already. Give me the thumbs up and hearts and stuff if you're enjoying this, please. Uh, I'd, be, I'd, love to, uh, I'd love to know that you're having fun with this. Uh, let's do some of those Mixcloud comments. Uh, all, you, all you had to do is mention it, and I switched to Mixcloud from Facebook, says DJ Gru. I haven't watched your live shows in a while, and I've missed it. Keep up the good work. Sideshow Mall has gone over to uh, Mixcloud as well. Steve, uh, my business partner, just says, I love you. I always knew it, Steve. Uh, he's on Mixcloud as well. Uh, Anon has just given us 100%. Hi to Chris in Dublin. I'll get all these Mixclouds done, because I promised I would. R Pards says, Phil, keep up the great work. Work. This is Rob in Florida. DJ Async is asking if there's any news on Denon Prime Engine Software Release 1.4 with Sync Manager. Not yet. They will tell us when it comes for sure. Uh, hi to DJ G in Los Angeles. How did you end up in Gibraltar? I'll tell you one day, DJ G. Uh, DJ Sykes says, hi, Phil, I'm here. Mark Pieman is over there on uh, on uh, Mixcloud as well, as is Luke Tom Thompson, who's switched over from YouTube, and he says it looks great. Uh, DJ at one is at uh, Mixcloud as well from New York City, as is DJ Async. DJ Sykes is there as well. Uh, so um, can I close the Mix Mixcloud page when I'm streaming, or will that kill the feed? Uh, it won't kill the feed until you reopen it and click end stream, I think. Uh, DJ G's over there. He's switched from Twitch to Mixcloud. Uh, all you people who've come to Mixcloud, do me a favor and follow our page because that means we can notify you when we go live here. Don't just go there and watch it and go away again. Follow Digital DJ Tips while you're there. J J Jai Panade is on Mixcloud Live, as is DJ TB. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so DJ TB, follow the page is in answer to your question. Steven in Mallorca. Um, so, uh, um, and D uh, George Forte is on Mixcloud as well. Says, do you know if Pioneer will be releasing something similar to the Denon Prime 4? I'm sure they will at some point. Uh, you know, four channels and all the power. But right now, I We've got no word on that. Uh, Aramaki on Mixcloud says, is it normal to have a delay on any live stream platform? Yes, totally normal. Uh, hi to Kevin on Mixcloud. Greg Kiwil on Mixcloud. Tried his first live stream there with two computers, one for streaming and one for DJing with the iRig stream and OBS. Everything I just described. Uh, said there was a lot of lag and start and stop on my laptop. Um, so... You're going to have to just troubleshoot it and try and work it out. I mean, it does all work. You're watching this now, so you've got proof it all works. But, uh, you know, it's hard to troubleshoot that stuff with you without knowing your system and talking to you about it. Just keep experimenting. I spent literally weeks experimenting with live streaming over the years here in this studio. I've had just as many failures as I've had successes. So keep at it. Stu M says, I always use vinyl. And when I'm working, I don't go on my decks as much. I'm considering going digital with a controller. Which controller would you recommend for someone who's never used a controller for before? I've got Tractor DJ2 on my PC. Uh, if you're used to vinyl, you could go for a controller that's got spinning jog wheels, like the Newmark NS72. But frankly, uh, you will find that all controllers feel extremely uh, comfortable straight away. Even the smallest controllers, like the ones we've been talking about here. So it's really a case of just looking at something that's within your price range 
and that you don't think you're going to outgrow. The best place to do it, uh, to find out, is just to go over to our reviews page on Digital DJ Tips and look at the controllers in there. Uh, pick your software first, Stu M. If you're a tractor user, well, you're going to have to have a tractor controller. So look at their S2 and S4. If you want to switch to different software, that gives you more choices. But if you choose your software first, that'll narrow down your choice and make it easier to choose. Stu, if, you, if you'd like any more help with that and your uh, Digital DJ Tips student, go to Student Hub and ask questions. If you're not, search Global DJ Network on Facebook, which is our public Facebook group. We need to admit you to it, but get in there, ask your question there. You will have dozens of DJs jumping in to ask a few more questions of you and to help you out. So Global DJ Network, search it. And that goes for everyone else as well. Search it on Facebook uh, and just apply to join. We'll let you in. Uh, it's a great group for DJs by DJs. Uh, so hello to everyone over there watching on GDJN today. Uh, George Forte, um, oh no, I've answered that already. Right, we've caught up on the Mixcloud uh, people. We've got 62 people over there now, which is awesome. Thank you for joining us over there on Mixcloud, which means unbelievable scenes. Uh, we've currently got uh, about 300 people watching this broadcast. Uh, you got to love. You gotta love these uh, live streams. I do enjoy helping as many people as possible. Any news from Native Instruments, says Francesco. Uh, no, they're plowing on there, they're doing their thing. They've got a good team, albeit a smaller team than they had this time a year or two ago, working on Tractor. Uh, so, so yeah, they're doing their stuff. Uh, all right then, so um, unknown on Facebook. The reason you're unknown is that you haven't clicked the allow us to show your name. You're probably watching over on our, um, um, Global DJ Network. Uh, in the description, and this is, goes for everyone on Global DJ Network watching this, in the description for the live cast, at the bottom of the description is a little link. It says Ecamm Live, Ecamm Live. Click on there, you don't have to do it now, just do it afterwards. And then next time when you comment, we'll see your, your, your lovely face, uh, which is much better. Uh, all right then, uh, so more and more comments. Uh, let's find some... Uh, uh, it's all live people, so I'm just looking to, to find stuff that we haven't covered something like before to get a broad range. Alvin says, hi Phil, I've been taking the new dance music formula course, but I wanted to know if there's any plans on doing a, an in-depth course of Ableton Live. Well, dance music formula is, is, is kind of based on Ableton Live. And when you finish that course, you're gonna be pretty good at Ableton Live. You know, we're not about just um, uh, teaching you the software for the hell of it really, because you know, what's the point if you can't get the results? So that's why we, you know, when we approached teaching Ableton Live, we decided we would use Ableton Live, but teach you to make a track with it. So stick with it. You will, you'll be, an, you'll be brilliant at Ableton Live by the end of that course, uh, Alvin. And of course, ask questions in the course if you're stuck on anything in there. Uh, all right then. Um, so Stephen says, only nine people hitting that like button. Come on, show some love. Yeah, go on people, show some love. Um, Thank you for being uh, being uh, there as our cheerleader, Stephen. Uh, all right then, um, so Aaron says, cheers for all the advice to date. I can't find the Rode SC4 cable anywhere right now. Would you recommend an alternative? Yeah, you know, it's you can get generic cables. So let me just explain quickly what this cable does to people. If you want to DJ on your controller and get the audio into an iPad, is a good example because it's still got a headphone socket. Anything with a headphone socket, you need a little adapter called a TRRS adapter. In fact, I've probably got one here. Every DJ's got one of these, haven't they? Yeah? The cable drawer. Mine's actually quite tidy. This is a TRRS adapter. So what this has got on it is, on it's got there, this is a headphone socket, but you see it's got three of those little black loops on it. It's called tip ring sleeve, T-R-S. But this is called T-R-R-S because it's got tip ring ring sleeve. And this is just a, you know, where you plug a normal headphone socket in. So what's this for? Well, you plug that into your tablet or device with a headphone socket on it or, your, or your, even your MacBook or your Windows PC. And into that, you plug a lead that will go off into two, you know, the red and the, and the white leads to plug into the back of your computer. And that will get the audio into your device so that you can live stream with it. The reason you can't find those anywhere is the same reason that you can't find audio interfaces, video cards, anything else, because the whole world is live streaming at the moment and everyone's sold out of that stuff. But luckily, that's a generic cable. So if you search for TRRS 
to TRS. Make sure that the male bit, the actual plug, not the socket, has got those four things on. And the other one, the socket, is the TRS bit. So make sure that that's the way around it because you can get you can get them the, the, the other way around. Um, cable, it ought to work fine for you um, to do to do that. It's like a hack. It's a little hack to get your audio into your into your tablet. Uh, all right then. Um, so um, Ian says I've moved from the Tractor Control S4 Mark II to the DDJ400 because I want to eventually transition to CDJs. Have I made a wide choice given my budget? Well. The DDJ400 is a much more beginner controller than the Tractor 4S2, but it does the job. And if you're, uh, you know, the reason you've gone for this controller is that you want to get used to the layout of Pioneer controllers. You've got all these sockets at the top here. Sorry. Yeah. All these buttons at the top here, which are all exactly the same. The memory cues and the looping, it's all just like it is on Pioneer uh, CDJs. And the effects here, although they're very limited because it's only a beginner controller, are laid out in the same way that the effects are laid out on Pioneer gear. So really what you've got going on here is a, a beginner focus, but nonetheless an approximation of what using Pioneer gear is like. So yeah, um, you know, you, I'd be happier DJing out on the, on the S4 than that because it's a beginner controller. But you know, uh, if, if that's your, your, your game plan, I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, all right then, so Tim G says, how do artists man monetize their live sets to download on Bandcamp? Uh, DJ by Mark just did this for Cinco de Mayo. I didn't know you could do that on Bandcamp. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, it might not even be legal. Uh, I'm going to make a note to look into that. Bandcamp monetization. Yeah, I didn't know you could do that. Could be something I've missed. Or he could be sailing close to the wind. As, we, as Brits like to say. Uh, all right then. Um, do you think the DJ world will stop using laptops and start using USBs? I'm just asking because it, it would be better. To, would it be better to get an all-in-one unit rather than a controller? Says Stephen. I don't know. Laptops are so ingrained and they're so good. I mean, with a laptop, you can spend ages preparing your music and your tunes and downloading it all and doing your playlist. You just take the laptop with you, plug it in and DJ. With CDJs and with USBs, you've got to e export all that and it takes a long time onto a card. Get to the gig, plug it in. It's clunkier at the moment. Then if you change anything at the gig, you've got to take that USB out or the SD card out, go back to your laptop, plug it in. It takes all the changes back. A lot of people don't like all that stuff. They just prefer plugging in a laptop. I think they'll both carry on. Uh, Rui said, actually, I meant the Prime Go, not the Prime 4. I've no idea when it's launching in the UK. Sorry, Rui. It won't be very soon, I don't think. Uh, so... Um, uh, DJ Timothy says, I watched Danny Tanaglia's live stream last Sunday and I highly suggest watching it. Uh, I saw that myself. I didn't see the, the stream. Uh, I'm making a note of that. Uh, and I'm going to watch it this weekend. Thank you very much for that, Timothy. Uh, hey, Phil, you were killing that set you did with Serato Play and the Key Command, said Charles. Yeah, I did. A, I did. A, for those of you who don't know, I did a video, a tutorial video on how to use just your uh, laptop keyboard with Serato. And I did a little set um, just to show you that you can do some pretty flashy stuff with it. It's on YouTube, by the way. So if you look for our YouTube, How to DJ with Serato Play, it's the third video in that playlist. Third video in that playlist. Thank you for that, Charles, over on Twitch. Um, so, all right then. Um, can you give us some good options for mixing songs with very different BPMs, such as 90 and 140? Because beat mix mixing would sound bad most times, says Austin. Yes, it certainly would. You probably wouldn't try it. There is a way of doing beat mixing, and that is you loop a short part of the of one of the tracks, like the, the track you're playing, like four beats. You just loop it. Do, ch, do, ch, just loop it. And then very deliberately slow it down to the BPM of the track you want to mix in, and then mix that in. It can sound great. It's obvious you're doing it, but it can sound great. Another good way to do it is to set the echo on the outgoing track to one beat. So it's going to echo at the length of one beat. Then as your song is finishing, hit that one beat before the end of the song or one beat before one of the one beats. You know, you count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You count one, two, three, four as you're listening to any song to give you the bars because all bars have got four beats in. Just one beat before the one. So in other words, one, two, three, four. On that four, press the echo on. And then on the one, take the track out. So it's one, two, three, four out. You've got to do it like that. If you do it like that, it won't work. One, two, three, echo on, out. And you'll hear the, the final beat of the track go do, 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 
and slowly echo out into the distance. And after that's echoed out a few times, drop the first beat in on the new track. It doesn't matter what speed the new track's at. That's the beauty of it. It'll just sound like you're meant to do it and that they blend together really nicely. So that's the one beat echo BPM change trick. If you're interested in, you know, dozens of ways to do that are mixing power skills course. Mixing power skills will show you not only changing BPMs and genres, but all other kinds of mixing tricks that allow you to basically mix anything into anything. Uh, find it on digitaldjtips.com slash courses if you're interested in uh, really getting stuck into that it's a great cookbook of ideas if you're you fight you feel your mixing's got a bit boring and you want you know you want to spice it up uh, all right then um so michael's asking about the denon engine software release we've already answered that one uh and uh no we don't know exactly when it's coming michael um so all right then um for a new dj with a budget of 1500 would you go with a ddj 1000 or a prime 4 forget the money do you want to use your laptop with it or do you want to use it on its own if you want to use it on its own get the ddj uh, get the prime 4 simple if you're more interested in just using the laptop uh, you'll save some money by getting the ddj 1000 which is a great uh is a great um is a great a great controller. It's a wonderful controller. It feels just like using a club system. Uh, all right then, Dwayne just says I am Bob. So uh, good on you, Dwayne. Uh, so uh, so more and more and more comments. We really have got lots and lots of them, uh, which is awesome. I'm just trying to find stuff that is uh, you know again, it's going to say that's different. Uh, Dwayne is now spamming. Uh, so can someone knock Dwayne out of this call if they're watching on our YouTube, please? Uh, so. Um, Gustavo says, yeah, Gustavo is actually helping out that uh, that user about the Prime 4 versus the DDJ 1000. So thank you for that. Hi to Nikos in Greece. Uh, we've got 163 countries, you know, in our school. And it's awesome. It's good to see people tuning in from all over the place. Um, so, OK, uh, uh, what is the link again for Mixcloud? Uh, Mixcloud.com slash live slash uh, digital DJ tips. That's your link for Mixcloud. Uh, how much should a beginner DJ charge to play at clubs? How long is a piece of string? It really depends, uh, but it's not a problem you have at the moment, is it, unfortunately? Uh, the person asking about whether your, uh, how you can see whether your graphics card is overloaded or not, uh, my graphics card has now got a lot of data on it, and that's what it looks like when you're monitoring it. You can see mine is coping very easily with my 4K camera uh, and stuff on this live broadcast. But as soon as I bring more and more cameras in, that starts to get overloaded, and even my broadcast starts to slow down a little bit. Uh, how do I DJ on Serato DJ Pro without a controller? Get the Serato Play plugin or expansion pack. Go over to our YouTube or to our website, to our um, to digitaldjtips.com, look in the recent articles or just search in the search box for Serato Play. And I've written a whole article there. I wrote the article last week or might have been the week before. And the reason I did that is that it's free, totally free at the moment. So you can actually go and download Serato DJ Pro for free and Serato Play for free and use that on your laptop for free forever. It's a great thing at the moment. So um, go grab it now, um, Michael. I hope that helps you. Uh, what do you think about the Newmark Party Mix? It's a great little controller for fun. Uh, and it's got a light show built in. What's not to like? Uh, yeah, Cosmin, get one. Uh, you'll have a lot of fun with it. Uh, do you see small events and live streaming to parties becoming a thing in post-COVID society? Do you know what? We talk about this all the time now. I think small events are going to become more important because they, they might say, you know, no more than 50 people in one room at a time or 100 people. Uh, and live streaming is not going to go anywhere now. It's embedded. Live streaming is the future. It's not, never going to replace gigs, but it's always going to be part of what we do now. I really believe that. Ian says, hi, Phil. I love the show. I've moved from S4 Mark II to... D oh, no, we've already uh, read that one out, Ian. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of uh, I'm seeing a lot of comments that I've seen before. Maybe you're just continually reposting them to make sure I get to them. Uh, Cesar says you've got a lot of gear. How about a giveaway? None of it's ours. Well, most of it's not ours. It's um, sample gear that belongs to the companies that's, that lent it to us, uh, and that's the way it goes in this industry. Um, so uh, let's have another question. Um, at the end of all of this, IK Multimedia is going to be worth a billion dollars alone just off that iRig stream. I know. These things are like gold dust. They really are, uh, these little interfaces. Um, 
Whatever happened to the Pioneer DDJ, DDJ Wego 5? Is it ever coming out? Uh, I was hoping for a bigger iPad slot with the DDJ Wego 5. I'm not so sure they will. I just think iPad DJing is, is not really going anywhere. Uh, I, I just think it's people will either use a laptop or not bother with any device. I think that's that's the way it's panning out. Uh, I can't see I can't see that happening, I'm afraid. Uh, but you never know, they might prove me wrong. Uh, so Richard says, a couple of years ago, more and the rest, you reviewed the CMD Studio 4A by Behringer. Uh, would you mind doing a tutorial about it? It's they, don't, they haven't made it for years, unfortunately, so I'm afraid we, we won't be doing a tutorial about that. Uh, 116 people over on Mixcloud at the moment. That's absolutely brilliant. Hello to, uh, hello to uh, all you new people tuning in over there. We've got Matt from Mixcloud watching us live at the moment, who are... Uh, who is uh, my pal over at Mixcloud. Hello, Matt. Good to have you here on this live stream. We're privileged. Uh, and lots and lots of comments uh, coming in over there too as well. Uh, although I, I, can't, I can't see any update to those comments um, unless everyone stopped talking over there. But I, I, I guess that isn't the case. Uh, maybe it is. Anyway, thank you everyone who's commented over on Mixcloud. Hello to, uh, to Mike. I didn't say hello to Mike there. I just spotted a new name. So... Uh, uh, so it was Nick actually, Nick Van, Nick Vandel. What do you think of Newmark controllers? Yeah, they're great. They're great beginner controllers. Uh, Fitty is confirming that you cannot get the iRig stream anywhere. Ain't that the truth? Uh, all right then. So more of your comments. Um, uh, I'm just looking for something that we haven't, uh, of the type of comment we haven't read out before. Right. Here's a good one. Horger says, do you think the EQ from different DJ mixes are not set at the same frequencies? Because when I make EQ transitions with some mixes, it sounds better than with others. Uh, so that, you know, your bass, mid and treble, these three here, right? There's your high, there's your mid, there's your low, or your bass, mid, treble, or high. Uh, the question is, you know, is it a different set of bass frequencies that that one's controlling? Uh, is it a diff slightly different set of highs and uh, of low, of mids and highs? It's a good question. On some very high end gear, you can actually adjust where the cutoff is or the changeover between the bass. You know, is the bass right at the bottom and the mid is a bit wider, or is the bass a bit wider and the mid's a bit narrower, or whatever? Uh, and you can also change how much they kill. So you can have what's called an isolator kill, where if you turn the, the, the low, mid and high all the way down, the music stops. Whereas the, the more subtle, you know, um, more usual way is you turn them all down and you can still hear the music a bit. Experiment with that, Horger, if you can find that on your settings. It might, you might just find that makes it better. Uh, but yeah, there are, there are slight differences. It has to be said between the different, uh, the different ways that works. Marcus says, how are you, Phil, at this time with all this stuff going on? Thank you very much for asking, Marcus. Absolutely fine, thank you, my friend. Um, so when do you think it will be safe to have events again? Uh, good question. I honestly believe it's not gonna be safe till 2021. I really do. Uh, so now that not many DJs use CDs, uh, I believe that buying two CDJ 2000s uh, plus a, a DJM 900 is redundant. Uh, do you agree? Well. You know, people don't buy CDJ 2000s for the CDs, really. They buy them to plug their USBs in and DJ. The CD slot's just there as a backup. Uh, but that said, you know, if you go to the Apple computer sites, you want to buy a new Mac, you can sometimes the sites say, buy now, it's a good time, or not sure, or do not buy, there's a new one coming soon. I'd say the CDJs are very much in the do not buy, there's a new one coming soon uh, phase of their life at the moment because uh, Pioneer haven't updated them for a long time. I'd be very surprised if they don't come out with a new one at some point this year. So maybe hold, hold on. Hi to my pal, a big dog girth over there in Chicago who's tuning in on Twitch today. Good to have you here, uh, Michael. Um, so a big shout out to uh, Unknown from our Global DJ Network page. Uh, right now I'm a doctor by day and a DJ by night. I'm enjoying live streaming to just my friends and connecting in a positive way. Uh, we salute you, our doctor friend over there. Uh, and click the Ecamm Live link in the description if you're one of our viewers over there on that channel uh, so we can see your names and faces when we share your comments. Uh, Ross is just saying, I'm loving the show. Ross, we're loving having you in our courses. You're a great student. Um, so uh, can you name your untitled tracks with the Prime 4? I don't think you can adjust the metadata in the Prime 4. I might be wrong. I think you have to do it over in Engine Prime on your laptop, Jody. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so um, 
Sean says, I've had my Rain 62 for seven years and it gives unbearable loud static in the middle of sets. Has it met its days? I'm considering the 72 now. The Rain 72 is a great mixer. We should have one here. No, in fact, no. We've got the Rain 70 here. This mixer here. The 72 is a bit posher. I'd say go for the 70. I think the 72 is overkill. This is a great mixer, this one. It really is. Um, but, you know, maybe you can get your 62 service. It might be something that can be fixed. I mean, they tend to last forever. Why don't you try and get it serviced first in the name of recyclability? Unless, unless you want a new mixer, in which case I'd recommend the 70, unless you really need the 72, uh, Sean. So I hope that helps. Uh, I need help with flip mode on my SX2. Flip mode allows you to jump around in the track with cue points and then record what you did and play it back as a variation of the track. It's a Serato DJ uh, feature. Well, it's easy. Just head over to Digital DJ Tips, go into the search box top right, type in Serato Flip. You will find several tutorials by Mark showing you how to use it. So there you go, easy. Uh, all right then. Um, uh, Mike has got two tractor questions. Will they allow the S4 Mark II to work on Tractor DJ? And will they ever update Tractor Pro 3 to, to at least a software that can recognize disco beat grids? Right, let's answer these one at a time. Uh, they probably will make the S4 Mark II work with Tractor DJ at some point. Will they ever make Tractor Pro 3 have flexible beat grids so it can beat grid disco and funk and soul and all those non-electronic genres? Yes, they, they will in the end if they keep going that long enough. Um, uh, they will, yeah, they will have to in the end because it's a glaring omission. Uh, I don't think it's going to come anytime soon because the, the pace of development over at Tractor has slowed down so much. But, you know, I think that is coming. Just don't hold your breath for it, basically. Uh, so, uh, wow, people, we've got five minutes left here. Please do hit like and uh, heart if you've enjoyed this, if you've got those things on the platform you're watching on. Also, please do hit share. That's the one I really want you to do. And if you're not subscribed to the platform you're on, especially if you've come over to Mixcloud, we've got 130 viewers on Mixcloud now, please follow us on Mixcloud. That allows us to tell you when we go live again. Uh, that would be really useful. We'd, enjoy, we, you know, we'd love you to do that. Uh, all right, so over on Mixcloud, uh, it's good to see you guys chatting to each other, which is cool. Uh, Marcus and Nick having a good chat over there. Uh, and... Uh, uh, hello to Tim over there as well. Yep, yeah, we've. Uh, it's good. I think people don't use the comments as much on Mixcloud. I'm not sure why that is because we've got a lot of people over there, but the comments are quite quiet. So maybe it's just a dynamic about the platform. Maybe if you're in the comments on Mixcloud, you can tell us why you're not so... Uh, why well, you don't want to use the comments as much because we get lots and lots and lots of them on Facebook and Twitch and YouTube and that'll help the developers to understand and to improve that platform. Uh, but it's very exciting to see hundreds of people tuning into Mixcloud now uh, from a standing start a week or two ago. So thank you very much everyone there. Uh, we're up to about 500 people in total now on these streams, which is really cool. Uh, all right then, um, <laughs> I'm struggling wrap wrapping my head around streaming. Have you got any tips, says Dave? Yep, pick your phone up, hit go live and do it. There you go, you've done your first live stream. Uh, next time, try and add something else in uh, and take it from there. You've got to do streaming to get streaming. You can't understand it all and be perfect about it in your head uh, without doing it. It doesn't work that way. It's like learning a language. You won't get better at a language unless you use the language and make mistakes and mess up. Your first 100 live streams are gonna be diabolical. Uh, they'll only start getting good at about 100. So you've gotta get that 100 under your belt, David. Just, just forget all your pride and go for it. We've been live streaming here for about three years now, maybe longer, and trust me, we've had our fair share of mess ups. I've spent 20 minutes talking to it to that camera when this camera's been switched on. Uh, you know, that was quite a big error. I've had, I've done, I spent 20 minutes talking without a microphone on. We've gone off, you know, the, the, the live streams have gone off. I've had the music so loud, no one could hear me. We've had all kinds of mess ups. Uh, you know, just have a go, David. And then go to Digital DJ Tips, click the search bar top right and type live streaming and you will see several articles a lot of articles about live streaming for beginners videos tuition tutorials resources you know take your time and absorb all that as well david uh, thank you very much for your comment uh, music video djs just says number one I like your logo there music video djs oh look there's a message popping in on my phone i must be the only person in the world with a phone that looks like that uh, this is going to be my wife saying we've uh, oh no it's my friend steve who says uh, oh, you've got to keep refreshing the Mixcloud page to see the comments. Uh, so that's why I couldn't see the new comments. So there we go. Um, so uh, I cannot get my Denon DJ Prime 4 to start at the queue position, says Charlie. Turn quantize off. 
that should almost certainly fix that for you. Um, so, okay. Um, so DJ Fee Brain has just followed us on Mixcloud uh, and also, also just, got, just bought our all new Dance Music Formula course. So thank you very much for doing that. Um, so if you're just joining us, where have you been? We're nearly finished. This is our Friday Q&A live on Digital DJ Tips. You can watch the replay as soon as we finished. You watch the replay on YouTube and on Facebook. So watch that replay. Uh, there's an hour of tips and tricks and advice and follow the page. Click like at the top, click subscribe, click show me notifications, uh, click show me posts first. And then we can let you know when we go live. You'll get a nice notification about it. Um, so, all right then. Um, uh, I'm good to see you guys just chatting about uh, that TRRS cable that I showed you, which I've now put away again. Aren't I good? Um, Sean has got a box of random cables and adapters. Yeah, I, I, I we clear ours out all the time. But uh, aren't, aren't phone headphones already a TRS ca RRS cable? Yes, they are. That's exactly what they are. But of course, the other end isn't the RCAs, right? So that's the problem. That you, that's why you're going to have to... Uh, concoct a table, uh, yeah, yeah, concoct, concoct a ca cable in order to do it. Um, what do you think about using music stems on tracks? I've never used them. Yeah, they're brilliant. They're awesome. You can get a piece of software called X Tracks Stems. X Tracks, T-R-A-X, Stems. And that will let you take any track and turn it into uh, drums, melody, and vocals to mix in stems. For those of you who don't know, it's a way of DJing in Traktor where you can separate those three things so you can load a track in and only play the drums or only play the music or only play the drums and music so you've got an instrumental or only play the vocals so you've got an a cappella. It's brilliant. Uh, so, but you do need to get some software to create those files that you can do that with. And X Tracks Stems is the best piece of software out there to do that. Uh, all right then. Uh, so... Um, Let's keep looking for a final handful of comments. Guys and girls, you've been brilliant today. Give yourselves a love. Give yourselves a thumbs up. I mean, what I love the most is seeing so many of you helping each other in the comments. That, that warms my heart. It really does. Uh, I always say this, but you are the best of the best in our community. Uh, it, I can't think of a better way of ending my week than spending an hour doing this every week. So thank you very much. Um, all right then, um, the SC4 is not the magical solution that it, you, you might think it will be. Uh, would you agree that live streaming is not an exact science? Yeah, you look, hot wiring your DJ controller through a mono microphone input into a phone is not the best way of doing it. It's a hack. You have to keep the, the volume low because it thinks it's a microphone input and all kinds of other stuff. It's in mono. Uh, but nowadays, you can't buy audio interfaces. But yeah, the best way of doing it is to use it with an audio interface if you can get one or if you get serious about it. People asking what we're using here, we're using a, a piece of software called Ecamm Live. Uh, so, uh, right, we're nearly ready to go. Uh, let me know how you've got on with this, please. Let me know how you, if you've enjoyed this hour, what you want more of next time, what you want less of. Just type that now in the, uh, in the box just to let us know how we can do better, please. Uh, thank you very much for everyone tuning in on all the channels, uh, especially all you people tuning in over over on Mixcloud. Uh, Mike says Mixcloud is actually looking really good and it's coming in faster than Facebook. Uh, so there we go. DJ His Honor says I've used the TR TRRS cable fix uh, and that works a dream for me. Uh, so that's good. These are all from Mixcloud. Uh, from now on, I will be watching the show here on Mixcloud. It says DJ LV2D. Uh, and Fluffy Bunny Feats says. Um, uh, keep your streams simple in the beginning and make sure you've got good sound and that you're not clipping. Yep, that's a very good advice to our person asking about live streaming. Thank you. If you're one of the 150 people who've joined us over on Mixcloud, you're the best of the best. Uh, we will see you guys and girls again next time. Goodbye to you. Uh, until next time. Uh, I've just said goodbye to Mixcloud because I have to close that one separately. Uh, to everyone who's left here, again, thank you very, very much for tuning in. I know you. Uh, there's lots of questions I couldn't answer. As you know, I haven't stopped for breath. I have tried my hardest to answer all of them. We will also get to your questions in the comments underneath and we'll try and answer as many as we possibly can. Listen, if you're a Digital DJ Tips student, get into our student hub group and join our student live calls once a month because you will get your question answered there. They're much smaller groups. So if you're a Digital DJ Tips student, any student from any of our courses ever, go over to Student Live. Again, it's on Facebook. Type it into the search bar. When you arrive, click join group, answer the questions that we ask you. We'll let you in and you get a broadcast like this but a lot more relaxed and you will get your questions answered over there. In these public ones, we get 
as you can see, hundreds of questions that we just can't answer them all. Uh, so I'll see you over there if uh, that's you. Uh, but otherwise, look, we're going to be here again on Tuesday uh, with a very special show on Tuesday. That's our Tuesday Tips Live where we have a theme or we have something we're talking about, a new bit of gear, a bit of news or so-and-so. That's where we were talking to the Mixed Cloud boys last week. Uh, what are we going to be doing this week? You'll have to wait and find out. Uh, and then next Friday, I'm back for another one of these. Thank you very much to everyone, Mark and to John uh, and to... Uh, uh, Lil, who says, you didn't even answer my question again. I'm very, very sorry. I've kind of apologised in advance for that. We will try our hardest. Um, see you all on the next live stream. Cleo uh, over there on Twitch. Thank you very much for tuning in. Fitty One Cent says, Phil is the best. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but uh, I'll take it. Thank you very much. DJ Rewind One says, thanks, Phil. Uh, everyone be safe. Thanks to DJ Digital. Uh, have a great weekend. Look, follow. If the last thing you do now is click that share button, I will love you a long time, as they say. Uh, so do that, get good, stay safe, make the moments, people, and I'll see you very soon. So until then.